P.K. Jain, would you agree with that view? Now, even if one were to argue the fact that, okay, perhaps it's not the easiest thing to tell a parent that, you know, your daughter has been brutally raped and murdered. But by to say that she has died by suicide, which is a blatant lie and a blatant attempt at mislead, do you think that is where a line was crossed? Not to mention the other lapses which Dr. Bagai is pointing out, the refusal to find, uh, or at least the refusal to file a formal complaint by the by the then principal, which led to this case initially being filed as a as an unnatural death, and all the other lapses that have come to the fore. Yeah, unfortunately, Ritangshu, uh, everything went wrong right from the moment go. The first uh, call I can understand in our own families also. If an unfortunate incident takes place, we never uh, tell the person concerned exactly. or the affected uh, family members that the person has expired because there could be an element of shock. Maybe, uh, you know, the person could have suffered. Yes, the first call I can understand. But subsequently, the second and then the third call in which it was projected as a suicide, I think that was absolutely erroneous. It was, uh, it, it smells of some kind of a conspiracy. And then, uh, you know, the FIR, etc. getting lost very, very late after almost, you know, more than 12 hours, the FIR was lost. Uh, uh, I think the hospital yeah. authorities have held in a, in a big way. And uh, the Dr. Ghosh, who was supposed to be uh, uh, in charge of the hospital, who is the principal there, you know, he having been transferred, he should have been asked to proceed on leave. Uh, what was the hurry to, uh, you know, um, install him somewhere as a principal again? He should have been asked to proceed on leave and the inquiry should have... So, and Mr. P.K. Jain, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I really need your perspective on this. All these lapses my, that you've my, mentioned, the delay in filing indeed. an FIR only at the behest of the father, the fact that for four days... The principal, there was no action taken. He was finally asked to go and leave on Monday when the incident happened on a Friday. And then he was rehabilitated. In terms of letting the initial leads in a probe go cold, as someone who understands how the police work, does that do irreparable damage to the initial phase of the investigation, which then even a CBI cannot take after or rectify? See, it does. Uh, by the time CBI entered the spot, it was already seven days. Now, for four days, the police was trying to crack their heads to find out as to who the culprit was. They did arrest somebody that goes to their credit. And finally, that person happens to be the actual accused also. But many other things which could have been collected by way of evidence, those evidentiary value of those things certainly gets diminished or lost. In this case, the crime scene was, uh, uh, was, was disturbed. In this case, the post-mortem notes, as they say, would have been tempered with. The postmortem was conducted in the same hospital. Tell me, Ritangshu, if a doctor cannot tell that this is a case of murder, who else will be able to say that? And unfortunately, in this case, the exactly. very fact that the story started from a suicide and the uh, unnatural death was reported in the first place, and it was reported so late. I mean, all these things are pointing to a uh, to to, yeah. to to a kind of a conspiracy. And the body, value, was, as you very rightly the body said, was discovered at 9.30. The call went out at almost 11 a.m. That's a one and a half hour delay. Firstly, I don't understand how a body can be discovered at 9.30. This woman had classmates and colleagues who knew she was working the night shift. And I don't know how the body was not discovered till 